Osmosis is the curse of a modern fiberglass yacht, and the one behind me has a particularly bad case. Scrape away the antifoul, and you can see the problem. Polyester gel coat has allowed moisture through to react with pockets of styrene in the layer. It's difficult to show the blisters, but then if you pop one. It's good stuff easing out here. Treating osmosis is an expensive process. The gel coat is stripped away and the substrate measured for moisture. This reading should be fine. Hot vacuum pads are attached to the hull and suck out the moisture until the hull is dry enough for a completely new outer layer. It takes a lot of time and expertise and can cost thousands. So what we need to do then is to put some sort of layer that's impervious to water over the top of our polyester. And the answer is this stuff. It's a two-pack epoxy called Gel Shield 200 and we're going to see how easy it is to put on. To actually apply the gel shield, you'll need to get rid of all your old anti-fouling. And it might be timely anyway, because as we can see, this one is actually long overdue for replacement. The easiest way to remove anti-foul is with a professional slurry blast. Your boat will be curtained off to protect your neighbours. Bear in mind that not all boat guards will actually allow slurry blasting on their premises. This is because the slurry, which is a mixture of olivine and sharp sand, is actually very powerful stuff when mixed with water under pressure. The operator has to dress up like some kind of astronaut. But the beauty of the slurry blast, it will actually key the hull, which will help you in your gel shield. The other thing too, is it's actually very fast, as you can see here. Which is more than we can say for poor old Martin here, who's doing what most of us would have to do and use a hand scraper. The process can be speeded up by softening the paint first with a proprietary chemical stripper. To avoid damage to gel coat, we can actually round off the edges of the blade. Hand or chemical stripping will leave a shiny gel coat, which will have to be abraded, but slurry blasting can have its problems too. After blasting off the anti-fouling, you may find this has happened. And this is where the gel coat, if it's, if it's old, has become rather brittle. And it will break out slightly, leaving little pot marks. These need to be filled. Uh, for that you require a watertight filler, which is a two component solventless epoxy filler. It comes in two colours. Take one part of component A, and one part of component B and mix the two together thoroughly until you have a good uniform colour. Having uh, made your mix, the epoxy filler, the watertight filler needs to be pushed into the hole and smoothed off like that. And then when it's hard, you need to sand it down smooth before applying the Gel Shield 200 over the top. Making sure we take the usual precautions against dust with dust masks and goggles, we can give the hull a final going over with a 60 to 80 grit to get rid of the last of the shine and any ridges. Remember too the places where the sander can't reach such as the leading and trailing edges of the keel or rudder. <laughs> now after sanding the gel coat, it's important that all the sanding debris is removed and this needs to be washed down thoroughly with fresh water. Then after washing down, remember to allow the hull to dry. A full step-by-step -step guide on applying the product is available in the current issue. And next month, our film will have Richard's top tips on how to successfully gel shield your hull.